Big view, yeah, that's a good one. Set up the time for prospecting, consistent with the five stories for Facebook and Instagram. Love it. Right on. Okay, guys, so here's what we're going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, welcome back. We are live with Club Wealth, Isaiah Colton and Company. Oh, and I got to put my other logo on here so I can, I always like to have the, the co-branded. Where do my, oh, I don't have my co-branded one on here. Ah, I'm, on the, I'm on a different computer today, so I apologize. I don't have my one that says Club Wealth and Isaiah Colton and Company on the background, but you know that we're, we're doing this together. So that being said, if you haven't done so already, and I only see a few people typing this in, I want to know what were your takeaways from yesterday and the day before, what were the, those one takeaway from each day that you are going to implement no matter what? You guys, I'm trying to make sure that you remember this because here's the thing. I love bringing you guys tons of value. I love sharing all these great ideas with you, but all of that really doesn't matter unless you actually implement it. And in order to implement it, we got to keep it top of mind. I got to make sure you remember what it is you've committed to yourself that you're going to implement. Uh, and so please, please, please make sure that you type that in now. Now, if you're watching this on Facebook, if you could jump into Club Wealth University so that you're on Zoom with us here, uh, but do it in Club Wealth University if you could. I want to get you guys used to logging into Club Wealth View so that you can see all the other cool content that Isaiah and I have available for you in Club Wealth University. Uh, so that being said, type in those two things, those two big takeaways that you're going to implement no matter what. Uh, and also, if you do not have your camera on right now, I see a lot of people on that do not have their cameras on. If you could please turn your camera on, that really helps me and our other presenters. It helps us when we have a real live audience. Uh, you know, I mean, there's, uh, you know, if you've ever been on one of those webinars where it's like avatars or something like that, it's not, it's not quite the same thing, right? Or if you just look at a picture or whatever, it's great when we get that interaction on video. Video. All right. So uh, real quick, one of the things I wanted to share with you. So coach Sarah Mulford Martin. So she is a coach with Club Wealth. And uh, that means that she's a baller. Uh, it's not easy to become a coach with Club Wealth. Every one of our coaches sells more real estate than the, the people that they coach. So if you're in tier one, right, you're doing zero to 25 transactions a year, then your coach would be someone who's in at least tier two, which is 25 to 75 transactions a year. If you're in tier two, your coach would be in tier three doing 75 to 150 transactions a year and so forth. Goes all the way up to tier seven, which is a thousand units per year and more. Uh, but the idea is that you always want to have a coach who's just ahead of you, right? Who's been through what you're going through right now, figured out how to get to that next level and is, thank you, Samantha, for putting that in there. That is awesome of you. Um, Samantha's so organized. I freaking love her. Uh, anyway, so long story short, it, uh, it ensures that you've always got a coach who's kind of just that level above you, uh, and they can help you get from where you are now to that next level. Now, Coach Sarah is, and, I, and Coach Sarah, forgive me, I don't remember what tier you're in, but, uh, but what I will tell you, she's in tier three, so she coaches tier two. Coach Sarah is doing 75 to 100 transactions a year. Uh, but what I want to share with you is a couple things. One, uh, what she's going to share with you today uh, is going to be on really leveraging your sphere of influence, correct, Sarah? And, uh, and she is crushing it with that. But something else I want to tell you about her. So she comes out every year. We have two events and Dave comes to those events. I see him at them a lot. I know we've had uh, Coach Don was on here earlier. Uh, I can't remember who else in terms of coaching uh, clients and coaches are on right now. But I'll tell you that we do these two big events each year. Uh, we have our listing agent boot camp in the spring, and we have our business strategy mastermind conference in the fall. And at business strategy mastermind conference, uh, we have tracks for team leaders, solo agents, buyer agents, broker owners, administrative assistants, um, lenders. We have a lender track at that event. So make sure you get your lender there. Uh, especially if you want your lender to be helping you out with the cost of client acquisition, right? If you want to get your lender contributing a little bit to help you grow your business, uh, getting them to that event will certainly help with that. Um, and, uh, and then we also have a track for what's called our youth squad. We have a youth and leadership track. And I'm bringing this up because coach Sarah has her daughters come to our youth and leadership events at each event. And they are fantastic. And I'm bringing this up because it's for, for kids from 12 to 21 and they come out of there pretty freaking pumped up. And so I would love coach Sarah, when you get rocking and rolling and you start sharing with us today, I'd love for you to share your thoughts on youth and leadership and what that's done with with your girls. 
uh, who, by the way, I'm hoping are going to come to work with Club Wealth at some point. I'm really optimistic that your daughters are going to end up being team members at Club Wealth and work with us as ISAs. And, and uh, I sure hope they're still thinking about doing that because they're rock stars, both of them. But uh, that being said, I don't want to spend too much more time uh, talking about those types of things. I really want to give Sarah as much time as we possibly can. She's got a lot to cover, and I want to make sure that she's got all the time she needs to cover it. So without any further ado, do me a favor, and if you guys could just, you know, maybe do a little bit of this, give Coach Sarah Mulford Martin a round of applause. This woman's a baller, and you need to hear what she has to say because she knows how to crush it with your sphere of influence. And it is a very important part of your business. And it's the low hanging fruit, right? It's the stuff that if you need a deal right now, fastest way to get it's called through your sphere, right? Go connect with your sphere right now and you can go get a deal pretty quick most times. So Coach Sarah, welcome. If you want to unmute your microphone and uh, I'm going to turn the time right over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Can everybody hear me? Absolutely. Yes, we can. Okay. Great, great. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. And yes, I will touch on the Club Wealth uh, Youth and Leadership quickly. My daughters both um, were exposed to that last year. And as we all know, if you guys are parents, when mom and dad say something, yeah, it just doesn't click. We don't know what we're talking about. We're stupid, blah, blah, blah. And they kind of went to um, listing agent boot camp, kicking and screaming. And I'm like, look, you guys are on uh, virtual school. You're really not learning anything other than how to be cheat on your friend. I can't do all that. So one of those high level oh, thinkers. Coach Sarah, um, to, hang on one second. Talk. Coach Sarah, yes. we're getting, your, your internet is a little bit choppy. I think, is that right? Are you guys seeing the same choppiness on Coach Sarah's internet? Okay. So Coach Sarah, what we're going to do is we're going to shut your, we're going to have you shut your video off and we're just going to have you do okay. audio. Yep. And that should, that should help. Better? Us out. Okay. Go, yeah. Try that again. Let's see how that goes. Okay. So we got, is we got, they came, they, they came kicking and screaming to listening agent boot camp. Yeah. Kicking and screaming to listing agent boot camp, And I said, you're only in virtual school. You're really not learning anything. You're going and let's get you around some higher level thinkers and um, kind of force them out of their comfort zone. And by the end of the first night, they were, I didn't even see them. They didn't want to come back to the room. They were so inspired by Doug Holiday, who's amazing, kind of like that grandpa figure to get them out of their comfort zone talking about business, what they were going to do. I'm working for Michael Hellickson, just at that complete mindset shift that we all know that the teenagers need, um, especially right now, something bigger outside of their traditional learning. And so they are on fire and I may be sending them to you sooner rather than later, Michael, if they don't go back to normal school soon. <laughs> so it's um, really cool about it. I, one of the things I, oh, go ahead. Definitely worth its weight in gold for sure. And they keep asking me about it and they are pumped for, to come up for business strategy mastermind. I'm excited to see them. I tell you, one of the things I think is really powerful about the youth and leadership event is that you've got all these great people that have kids and grandkids that bring them out to the event. And, they're, and so you start off with motivated parents and grandparents bringing smart kids with them, you know, and, and, and the kids are, are all very well behaved. Like they're very, they're, they're very mature kids, right. For their age, uh, or at least it seems that way. And so now you put these group of kids together and it's like putting the best of the best kids in the same room together. And so all of a sudden your kids have a peer group, uh, you know, that you don't have to be worried about, you know, you know, what's really going on in there? Are they really talking about, you know, is, is, is it good for my kids? Is it really helping them build up, uh, you know, their, their belief systems in terms of, you know, setting goals and, and figuring out, you know, how they're going to survive financially in this world and how they're going to run their business one day and all this kind of stuff. It's a pretty neat program. So yeah. I would recommend that everybody that has kids that are between the ages of 12 and 21, uh, if you're able to make it to the Business Strategy Mastermind Conference in November, you need to get your kids registered for the youth and leadership component. Uh, I think, they, what do we have, 20 kids in the last one, Sarah? Uh, yeah, I think there was about 20 by the end. And they're trying to get it. Their goal is over 500. I think Coach Carter really inspired them. <laughs> I'm like, well, we need to talk to Michael about that. But that would be fantastic. I'd be blown away if they could do that. I'll just be happy if we can keep getting 20 to 30 of them out there and, and yeah. have them continue to grow. So that said, Coach Coach Sarah, go ahead and take it away. Tell us about how we're going to leverage our sphere and get every ounce of, of productivity we can out of our sphere of influence in our database. Yes. So you definitely want to leverage your sphere and your farm. Um, 
I do that with three to four client events a year. Last year was a little tough because of COVID and it does not have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be over the top. Um, one year I did a, a movie night where I rented out the movie theater and co, um, sponsor that with one of my lenders. It was a big hit. I recommend doing that, um, in the January, end of January, beginning of February timeframe when everyone's coming off their Christmas high and everyone's bored, but nobody has money to do anything <laughs> because they've spent it all on Christmas. They're ready to get out of the house. Um, another thing that I like to do um, is a, a night at the vineyard that was a little bit pricey, but I had a great turnout this year, hired a little local um, acoustic gar uh, guitar player, uh, sponsored a local vineyard, got the wine glasses ordered. It was, that was probably the, one of the best client events that I ever did. And just constantly reaching out and touching someone. So especially, you know, the sphere that's, that's buying for me, I'd say a 30 to 50 mile radius, where they can get to you. And I do that with uh, four client, three to four client events a year, reaching out and touch them with a the phone on the odd months where I'm not doing the event and then a postcard or card in between. And I never talk about real estate. Um, unless it's, I shouldn't say never, unless it's brought up to me first. How are you doing? Make it about the client, make it about the event. And inevitably I'll get three or four referrals every single time. Um, making sure that they know that you're in the business, but you don't want to constantly shove real estate down their throat. Um, another thing that I like to do is sponsor, I don't know if you guys still do school folders, but sponsor the school folder, a little advertisement in there, because if your sphere of influence is close, then your kids are bringing that home. And that's going to be um, in front of the people that are, are around you and in your sphere of influence, people that are buying from you as well. Um, I'm trying to think what else, as far as client events, we do a back to school night with ice cream social. Uh, Thanksgiving pie giveaway is a great one. I usually hand those out the Monday before um, Thanksgiving. And then this year we're going to be adding on pictures with Santa. Last year was a little hard to do that because people are still scared to come out. We lost you for a second there, Coach Sarah, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, your internet's breaking up just a little bit. So, but that's all right, keep going. You've got the floor. Can you hear me? What was yep. the last thing you heard me say? We got you now. I think you, you ended right on your sentence. It's fine. You're good. Okay. We, we got we got the last part. Okay. And making sure that, um, like I said before, I don't know if you heard me, that it's all about them and <clears throat> what their needs are. How are they doing? How are their kids doing? And, not, and I really don't even talk about real estate unless they bring it up. Mm-hmm. And how does that work for you? So how, so how, give us an idea of how much business you end up getting from your sphere of influence each year. I would say directly from my sphere of influence, I probably do about 15 to 20 deals a year, but typically those people will also refer me out to other people moving to the area. I live in a very transient area with a lot of military moving in and out. So that referral network is pretty tight. Um, so uh, how many more transactions do you think you get to that part? Probably about another 60. About another 60 transactions. So yes. basically you get about 75 transactions a year from your sphere of influence. Yes. Ultimately. Yes. Okay. And how many total people are in your sphere of influence? I would say the close knit people, probably about 1500. So 1500 and you're doing 75 transactions a year out of a 1500 person sphere of influence. Yeah. Is that about right? Just, just sphere of influence. Yes. But Love sometimes it. I would say it's even like twice removed. You know, if mm -hmm. I've got somebody in the military, they're moving here, they're moving to Washington, and then they talk to somebody and they talk to somebody. So it's kind of like the six degrees of separation. I would say more, it's like three degrees of separation in real estate mm -hmm. or referral based and sphere of influence. Okay. So then how, let's, so I've got D is asking, do you do event your events like ice cream social during the week or is it on the weekend? When, when do you do those? When do you time those? I usually do them on the weekend, a Friday night. So it's because it's Saturdays, Sundays is family time and Saturdays, people with children have sports and events. So I try to do most of them on a Friday evening. Love it. And what time usually? Uh, probably around six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Good stuff. And you're doing again, how many per year? How many client events? Four. I try to do one a quarter. Right, that's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Good stuff. All right. And keep going. Even, even in during the COVID, I did uh, the Halloween thing. I did a virtual send in a picture. This gets a lot. Send in a picture on the Facebook page of your pumpkin cut cutout, you know, your, your pumpkin carving. And then they voted and we gave out uh, Amazon gift cards and Brewster's ice cream gift cards and things like that. And the kids really love that. I got mm -hmm. a lot of good feedback for that as well. It doesn't Very have cool. to be expensive. It doesn't have to be in person, but you do need to reach out. So, and so before, so let's talk about before your client events, uh, you know, are you calling all these people? And if like, how many, how many calls do you make to your sphere of influence before a client event? I try to call them directly. And then I also use slide dial so that mm -hmm. it'll, it'll do the mass calling. You know, it gets, I just say it gets overwhelming. I'd rather call, or sometimes I'll have one of my assistants call um, to make sure that they're staying in touch, but they typically like to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Yep. I you love know, it. Hey, right. I just wanted to let you know this client event is coming up and then I'll send another one out with slide dial. Love it. And so you're, you're making at least one personal phone call to all 1500 of them. And plus you're sending out the slide broadcast. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so are you guys, if somebody raise your hand, if you're on camera and, and you are familiar with slide broadcast, can you guys raise your hand? If just, I just want to get a feel for, okay. So for those of you that aren't, basically it's a technology that um, you can, you, you can basically do direct to voicemail, or you can just, you can have it, you, you can mass call a bunch of people and it'll play a recording for them. I like the direct to voicemail better because a, a lot of times they can't figure out that it's, that, that it wasn't directly to them. Like the goal for me is, if I can, it, let, let's, let me back up. I love the personal phone call. First and foremost, I want to make that personal phone call to all 1500 people mm -hmm. and invite them to the, the event, just like Sarah's doing. Now, I love the slide broadcast from the, or excuse me, the, 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 yeah, the slide broadcast. So where it drops that voicemail, it's a direct voicemail drop because I can record the message in a way that they can't tell that they're not the only one that got it. Right. I want them to feel like they're the only one that got that voicemail and that I had called them and they just missed my call. Right. Um, and the company that I use for that, uh, we use a company called um, um, Sales Dialers. And if you could get me the link, uh, Danielle or or Julia, if you could get me the link for um, our discount code into uh, into Sales Dialers, that'd be great. Um, we'll get, we'll have them post that in the chat here in a little bit, but that's the one we use and it works great. Slide, slide dial is another one. Um, I just happen to like sales dollars a lot. That's also the company we use for our, our, our multi-line dialers. And so keep going, Sarah, let's hear more. And <clears throat> I heard another one that I'd like to implement this year is picking a teacher back to school. Um, and then you pick a teacher that you'd like to sponsor because it gets other people involved. And then you do a big school drive and send them a box of school supplies or things that they would need for their classroom. So I'm going to implement that probably at the end of August. I don't know when everybody goes back to school on this call, but we're going back at the end of August. I think that will be a little bit more community involvement and get your sphere involved as well. So you know, have you ever done the scholarships? No. So one of them that I've heard that, uh, well, I, we've got a dentist in town here that just crushes it with this. Actually, he's an orthodontist. And what he does is he goes to the high schools and to the middle schools. And they all, seems like everybody's graduate got graduation now. Even the freaking preschools got graduation now. I'm like, you know, when I was a kid, we're like, yeah, you made it to the next grade. Congratulations. You're not dead yet. Right. right. Like, whatever. I don't get this. You know, we graduate from every freaking class thing, but that being said, uh, you know, what he does is he goes into the middle school and the high school graduations and he'll do a scholarship. And because he's doing the scholarship at the graduation ceremony is where he gets to present the scholarship. And so they'll have this big assembly. They got all the parents there and the kids are all there and he's doing a $1,200 scholarship for some kid that, you know, wrote an essay on, you know, why it's important to have a pretty smile. I don't know what, like, you know, why it's important to clean your teeth. I, I you know, whatever it is, whatever it is, his little essay thing is, but what the point is that he's got all that exposure for very little dollars. Mm -hmm. And there's also a bunch of touch points throughout the year where they're given the exposure, you know, where he's putting it out there that, Hey, there's this scholarship available and here's how you apply. And it's, and of course it's got his company and brand attached to all of it. Uh, so it's pretty cool and it's not a lot of money. So if you're talking about doing stuff with the schools, 
I'd really take a look at that one. And so Caroline asks, um, Coach Sarah, what criteria do you use and follow in picking a teacher to sponsor? And then what does that sponsorship look like? I think, and I haven't done this yet, so I heard it from another person that you have you put it out on Facebook, your sphere of influence, they get to nominate a teacher to sponsor. And then who I guess whoever gets the most nominations, you pick one teacher from each school or each district, and that's who you sponsor based on the votes. Huge. Yeah, because it gets that other people involved as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. And then, and then how, oh, go ahead. I was go ahead because I, I was going to segue into something else. What were you going to ask? Well, how much money are you spending on that? How much you know? What and what, what does that look like? What's, what's I would your... say to budget, you know, like three four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So not a lot. It doesn't even have to cost a lot of money. No. And you're probably paying another what fifty a hundred dollars on boosting the ads for that. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You can boost the ads. You have to be careful about the way you boost ads on Facebook. I've heard sometimes it puts, you know, it's putting money in the in a paper shredder. So it's got to be really specific <laughs> about what you're boosting ads. It's probably better to boost an ad for something like that than rather than just boost it. Nope, you're breaking up a little bit, Coach Sarah. Where you're getting every, every once in a while, you're breaking up a little bit there, Sarah. So I don't know if it's if you're on a landline or Wi-Fi, but you might want to get closer to your router. I'm sorry to be all in all honesty. We traveled last week. My daughter woke up this morning sick with a sore throat and can't smell or taste anything. So I have to sit outside at this office and use the Wi-Fi outside. I can't go inside. So, hey, there's, you know, having had COVID in the past, I'll tell you that there's some advantages to not being able to smell or taste anything once in a while. I mean, you just never know. Sometimes you get invited over for dinner and you're just like, whoa, not sure what that is. Glad I can't taste it. Just say it. I've been banned to the outside while my husband takes them to get tested. So we're all, nobody's really sick, but I thought, oh, I can't go inside of this house over here. So um, yeah, that's, awesome. that's why the internet's a little spotty. So I apologize on no that. Worries. But I wanted to segue into working my sphere also led me to working my farm. And they kind of interconnected. So typically... When you're living in a town, you know, I live in a pretty small town, heavy military. My sphere turned into the the neighborhood that I farm. So try to think about that and marrying those two things up. Um, Pick, try to pick a neighborhood where people are want to be. That's typically somewhere where good schools, um, close to amenities, and then also to the people that you hang out with and kind of marry those two things up together. And naturally I got the farm and probably one of the most popular neighborhoods as well as a lot of my sphere. And it's really doubled my business in that area. So uh, just one of the little tips that I've, I kind of fell into that and learned as I was going through it. Well, you, you're double dipping, right? So every time right. you're marketing, you know, so you, because now you've got a, you, basically what happens is you start off with a lot more people in that area talking about you. Right. Uh, and so now everything, everything you market, everything, you know, every time you do an advertising, you run a, a food drive or whatever it is you're doing, all of a sudden you're like the teacher thing. All of a sudden people are talking about you and they're like, oh yeah, she's a good friend of mine. She's wonderful. I love her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 So it kind of naturally, if, if you can marry those two things up, it's you're like you said, it's double dipping, double dipping, and it wants to be a little bit heavier hitting. Well, and I'll tell you this, it also takes the edge off things like door knocking, right? And, yes. and I'll tell you, a lot of people are like, door knocking, I thought this was going to be a digital challenge. Well, yeah, it, listen, digital is important, guys. But remember, we still got to pick up the phone. We still got to do stuff like door knocking and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, do you have to door knock to be successful in this business? No. But if you're going to have a farm area, door knocking should be a component of your game plan. It really should be. And it's very effective, especially if your sphere of influence and your and your farm area have a lot of commonality because now when you're knocking on doors, some of the people you're already friends with them, right? So you have it. So it makes it easier for you. You get a little reprieve from the, Hey, I'm Sarah. Instead it's, Hey, how's it going? And you get to have a nice conversation and you're a little bit more pumped up for the next one. And when you go talk to the neighbor, you're like, Hey, do you know Susie next door? You know, just be careful about, you know, Oh yeah. She's got that dog that barks all night long. I hate that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We'll say shut that dog up. Another way I found effective door knocking that I think works better um, is for an open house. I'm telling you, people don't want to do open houses and that is your biggest 
source of immediate buyers. Mm -hmm. Man, it's crazy how many buyers I pick up at an open house. And if you door knock around the open house before the open house, that's another good source of getting your name out there and business. And how I approach it is, hey, you know, I don't want to bother you. I know it's a Saturday, but I just wanted to let you know I'm having an open house next door. So you may see a lot of car traffic. And I apologize if somebody parks in front of your driveway. It'll only be just for a little bit. Just open that conversation up. Um, and that's another great way. Just do a door knock without just, you know, going out and in policing the whole neighborhood at the same time. I knock around like the 10, 15 doors closest to the open house. If you guys uh, haven't done so already, go to clubwealth.com forward slash open houses, clubwealth.com forward slash open houses. We've got a, a blog post there that's got a video and a checklist you can download for free uh, that'll walk you through how we're getting anywhere from 50 to 150 people out to each open house. You guys, they're gold. They really are. The open houses are on fire, especially right now. Yes, because everybody wants to get out and look and see. And if you're not, uh, this is where a lot of agents are getting lazy. Oh, I don't need to do an open house. Oh, I don't need to really step up my marketing because houses are selling in an hour or days. And that's where you got to switch your thinking and go, this is where I really need to pump it up even more because why all these other agents are pulling back and not spending money. I'm going to go all in because this market isn't going to last. And they're going to remember who was still doing the open house, who was still pumping up their marketing and doing video and professional photography. This is not the time to whip out your iPhone and just say, Oh, I'm going to save myself a hundred dollars. Well, not only that, you're filling your pipeline, right? I mean, if you right. think about it, because when this shift really happens, guess what you're going to need? You're going to need buyers, right? right? You're going to need people that are going to want to buy houses. And a lot of these people, these buyers that are out there now, they're starting to get a little buyer fatigue. Yes. And uh, so let's take advantage of that, use that to our advantage and start feeding that pipeline so that down the road, three, six, nine months down the road, those guys are buying houses from us. Mm -hmm. uh, and the people that come to your open houses will be your sphere of influence. I have mm -hmm. the same people show up at multiple open houses, especially right now because inventory is so low and they just want to see what's out there. So you can build that rapport, a 10 minute conversation, a five minute conversation really helps put you in front of them and in the back of their mind when they're really ready to pull the trigger be the go-to, be the source of information, and that will help build your sphere of influence as well. Love it. Great stuff. Keep going. I'm trying to think what else would you like to know that I do? Anything you've got ready for us, whatever you, whatever you want to tell us about. I'm trying to think another thing that I, I like to do is um, if you're in a military town is militarybyowner.com. Um, advertising on that. Listings to leads is probably one of the best sources as well that's affordable if you're just starting out listings to leads has a wealth of information um and tools and i think it's like 30 40 bucks a month you may have a discount right michael for club uh, we do if you go to clubwealth.com forward slash l2l clubwealth.com forward slash l2l and oh thank you for that sam sam put in the correct link for that i think i put in the wrong link uh, so she put in the right link for that, um, that massive open house uh, blog post. Uh, so if you look in your chat, it's right there. But yeah, clubwealth.com forward slash L2. And, and I would agree with Sarah on this. Guys, dollar for dollar, it, it's the best we've seen. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it's so cheap. I think we, it's like 40 bucks a month with the club wealth discount. Uh, and it's just, it's a gold mine. Uh, we, we, we have people in tier seven that use it. I mean, we have people in every tier you can imagine that are using uh, listings to lead. It's just, it's amazing yeah. what they offer for, for virtually nothing. Uh, it's very right. cheap, very affordable. Very affordable. And it's, it, it's about consistency over multiple platforms. Everyone asks me, like, what, what's the one thing? And then there really isn't one thing. You've got to do different things consistently. So your people are seeing you on different platforms, whether it's the internet, Facebook, postcards, you know, aver different print advertising, the school um, uh, folders. It's the consistency. And people, people in real estate are watching, but they're not going to reach out and talk to you most of the time until they need you. But when they need you, they need you and you want to be the one that they call. So be consistent. And you can also hold open houses for other uh, agents if you need business. That's, that's how I started out, was helping out other agents in my office. And they didn't care. They wanted the, the open house. They didn't want to sit in it. And I picked up so many buyers that way. It was great. It was great and built my sphere off of that. 
Okay, so we got a couple of questions in the chat here for you. And by the way, I agree with that. You know, going to other agents and getting them to let you hold their their listings open is great. You know, it's funny. A lot of people say, well, what happens if it sells already? You know, what if what if we got a pending offer on it, but before that we have time to do the open house? Do the open house anyway. Anyway, yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. seriously, you can take backup offers and who cares if they buy that house or some other house? Do the open house, man. All you care about is I want to get those buyers to buy something for me. Mm -hmm. Uh all right. So D asks, how did you start your farm and uh, what strategies and marketing did you start with in your farm area? I remember when I first started, I knew the neighborhood that I wanted to be in because I, I, I watched to see where people wanted to buy and watched to see what the hot neighborhood was. And um, I broke through I, my one of my very first listings came from somebody that I went to school. My kids went to school with mm -hmm. Um and I didn't cut my commission, but I over delivered on what they wanted. I paid for all the staging, the whole house staging for them, um, built that in. I did, I went, if somebody was doing professional photography, I did professional photography with drone and walk through video and the Matterport and just went on in my services. And then just was consistent in my marketing and getting my name out there over and over and over again. And if they, you know, if they were expecting silver, I gave them platinum. And mm -hmm. so you have to under promise and over deliver when you're really getting out there and whatever someone's doing, you've got to go two steps ahead of it and show your value. Love it. Okay. So, uh, is there a good door knocking script that you use? Zachary asks. Most of my door knocking, I, like I said, I did around my open houses. I've not actually fleeced a whole neighborhood going door to door to door, but it would be the open house. Hey, just wanted to let you know I'm having an open house down the street today. I get there an hour, hour and a half early. Um, and what I also do as a side note, I'll take a video of myself in front of the house before the open house when you're fresh and ready to go. Hey, this is Sarah Martin with Remax One. I wanted to thank you so much for stopping by the open house today. I appreciate it. I hope you really love the home theater system. And wasn't that kitchen where they did the custom backsplash fabulous? Let me know if you'd like a private tour again or if there's any other homes you want to see. And I record that on my cell phone before I start the open house because we all know by the time the open house is over, we just want to get out of there and go home. And then everybody that registered for that open house that day, they get that video. Not the next day, not two days later, that night. You got to strike while the iron's hot within a couple hours after the open house while they're thinking about it. And that's mm -hmm. really helped me a lot. Um, but as far as the door knocking, I just really do go around the open house. And, you know, you might have to see some extra traffic. I apologize if somebody parks in front of your driveway. Sometimes they'll come over and talk to me even more or want to start the conversation about when they're ready. I'll get a call. You know, I see the marketing that you're doing. I put pinwheels out. I put open house banners out. And my husband puts the sign out way early in the morning. We used to put them out a couple days ahead of time. Unfortunately, the state highway is taking our signs down and charging us a fine. So. Well, you know, and it's funny. I, and I hear people say that all the time. Well, Michael, if I do a bunch of open house signs, because we recommend you should do, you know, 50 plus open house signs, right? Like ideally you want to have 50 or more signs out there. And a lot of people are saying, oh, but in my market, they fine you for it, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, or they, they take your signs. You got to pay to get them back. Let me yeah. tell you guys a quick little story. So I had uh, back when I ran for office, I was 26 years old, I think. And I was running for the city council. And uh, I really wanted to win this. And I figured out, you know, that, hey, I could say 10 things right on the door and one thing wrong. And they wouldn't, you know, send me the, you know, the, they wouldn't vote for me. Um, but if uh, but with my signs, it was all about name recognition. So I did just I did thirty five hundred signs in a very small. This town was only 80,000 people or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Right. So it's pretty small town. And I did 3,500 signs in three months in this town. So as you can imagine, there I got I put some signs up in some places that the city ended up taking them down. And in particular, there was this one spot right as you came into town. There's this McDonald's, you know, anywhere there's a McDonald's, it's a good intersection, right? Mm -hmm. And so there was a McDonald's on one corner, a car, gas station, all this, and there was this island in the middle of the road, and I would put my sign there. And every day I'd put, you know, every, every, every Friday I'd put my sign up and by, by Monday morning, the sign Nazi had stolen my sign, right? The, the gal from the city whose job it was to make sure that we didn't put signs where we weren't supposed to. And I thought to myself, well, man, that sucks. But, you know, it cost me about $2.50 for each one of these signs. So I just kept putting them up. I figured, well, it's just part of the cost of doing business. 
Well, then she calls me up one day and she says, hey, Michael, you need to come get your signs. And I said, what are you talking about? She's like, well, I've got like 40 of your signs here that I've been taking down because you're putting them where you're not supposed to. You need to come get them. I said, great, I'll be right down. She's like, well, you will hold on. You got to bring me money because we charge you five dollars per sign. We fine you five dollars per sign to get your signs back. And I scratched my head and I thought for a minute, I thought, well, you know, it's only two dollars and 50 cents to go buy a new one. So I thought, well, I'm just going to, I'll just buy new ones. Like, I'm just like, well, just go ahead and keep them. She's like, what, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, because these were filling up her cube, literally her little cubicle at the office. She says, what are you talking about? I said, oh, you just go ahead. It's cheaper for me just to buy new ones. So just, just go ahead and, and keep them. And she says, so you're really not going to come get them. I said, nope. She says, well, do I have your permission to throw them away? And I thought to myself, I thought, hmm, if she throws them away, where is she going to throw them away? Well, wait a minute. There's a dumpster behind city hall. And did you know Interesting truth. Did you know that as soon as garbage hits the street, it's public property? So she would chuck my signs out back and I just would go get them for free. And so I got my signs all back for free, right? So why am I sharing this with you? Because yeah, you know, you got to follow the law, okay? But was I following the law? Yeah, I was following the law, right? So if if the law says, you know, hey, we're going to fine you for putting your signs up, you got to ask yourself, what's it worth to me to have those signs up? If it's $5 fine per sign. So wait a minute. So you're saying if I got 50 signs up, that's going to cost me $250 to be able to have those 50 signs up. That's worth it, folks. In most markets, that's probably really well worth it. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. The signs bring you a lot of traffic to your open houses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's 25 bucks. The state highway takes them and you can't get them back and you get a bill in the mail. And you can't get them back? No. That's terrible. Yeah. So what you need to do is you need to put them on private property. So what you do is you make sure that, you know, you put them out of the city's right of way on Mm -hmm. private property, make sure you get the private property owners uh, permission, you know, so I'd knock on the door, great opportunity to knock on doors, right? I'd knock on the door and I'd say, Hey, would you mind if I put my sign up for two, three hours while I hold an open house down the street? Most people are going to be nice and say yes. And if they don't, then you don't put one there. You, you get the, the a neighbor on the other corner to let you do it. Um, but again, great opportunity to knock on doors. I'm telling you, though, you guys, those signs are golden, golden. Any other thoughts on that, Coach Sarah? No, I think that's funny, though, that you that you would just go get them out of the trash can. That's pretty smart. The Dude. next time I get one in the mail, I'm going to ask them if I can come get it out of the trash can. Well, what's really funny is she was too short to actually reach the top of the dumpster. And so they, she literally stacked them next to the dumpster. So I just got them. I didn't even have to, I wasn't dumpster diving for them. I literally just got them off the side of the dumpster. That was great. So joke was on her. What do I say? What's really funny is I started on, eventually I started writing little love notes to her on the back of my signs. And uh, yeah, that really pissed her off. That was, but I, you know, I was just writing stuff like, you know, have a great day, Betty, you know, Hey, we'll see you next week, Betty. You know, I was just, yeah. Dude, she didn't like that at all. All right. That being said, uh, let's keep moving on. We got some more questions in the, in the text here. Uh, somebody's talking about, uh, was, was talking about doing open houses on new construction. So let's just talk about this for just a second. Open houses on new construction are huge. And more importantly, I want you guys to think about adopting new construction neighborhoods. Now think about this for just a second. What happens when the builder sells out that neighborhood? How often do they come back after that neighborhood sold out? They don't. Never they never come back. back. Right. And so wh- let me tell you, a really smart play is you adopt the neighborhood. You become that neighborhood agent. You become that neighborhood expert. And during that time when they still have stuff that they're selling in the neighborhood, what do you do? You hold the open houses and you make yourself a resource for them. And mm-hmm. you just let the builder know, hey, look, I'm going to do everything I can to be a resource to these people. Even after you're gone, I will do the very best I can to field as many phone calls as I can and take care of them and help you avoid unnecessary calls on things that really aren't the builder's responsibility. Won't that be great? Oh yeah, that's great. So I would treat that as, and I would check with the builder, make sure you're not going to get sideways with the builder on this, but I would treat that neighborhood like uh, your farm area, even before the builder has sold out of the neighborhood. That's what I did. That's one of the things that I did with my sphere and that farm. I, I know that neighborhood and I know that builder and that builder is probably one of the best mass builders in the area that everybody requests. I live in one of their homes. So I know every floor plan in and out. I know all the finishes in and out. Make sure you know the prospectus that they get in and out and what they mean. Make sure you know the the newer upgrades, the newer finishes. So you know 
those homes, if you're going to select a new build, every community, every floor plan, and every change that they've made, so you're the go-to person. Mm -hmm. and when, here's the thing when you become the resource it's very intimidating to another agent to try and take over that market it's yeah. really hard and by the way if you have 25 percent or more market share in a neighborhood it's really really tough for another agent to get a foot in there yes. it's really yeah. tough and that's another thing to keep in mind when you're looking at where you want to be as your farm area make sure that you're not competing with another agent that's got 25 percent market share in that neighborhood right oh, i did yeah i did that's huge, right? Well, you're saying you had 25% or more, right? No, I didn't. I didn't have any. Oh, when I was but you made out. sure now that nobody else I did. Sell, I probably, I would say I probably have 85% market share in that neighborhood. And now. nobody's going to want to go in there and compete with that, mm -hmm. right? I mean, what are the chances somebody else is going to be able to come in? As long as you keep doing the things you need to do, what are the chances somebody else is going to be able to come in and pry their way into that neighborhood? Yeah. It's going to be tough. They don't want to. That's It's intimidating. No. Yeah. All right. So good stuff. So, and by, by the way, if you guys keep, I love the questions you guys are typing in and I love the, the suggestions you guys are typing into your chat. This is great. We turn it into a true mastermind that way. So keep that up uh, because we can all learn from each other's experiences. Now, um, uh, one of the questions that we had a moment ago, somebody was asking about that website uh, that we recommended for, for lead gen. Uh, it was clubwealth.com forward slash L2L. And that takes you to a company called listings to leads listings to leads. Uh, great stuff. Clubwealth.com forward slash L2L. It's a great company, great people to work with. Isaiah and I both work with them all the time on, on different things. So um, now next question was, how do you hold an open house on new construction? Could you explain that to us? Um, typically, you're going to want to do that on a weekend where you're going to get the most traffic. Most people are coming in there through a Saturday. Obviously, you've got to get permission it's a little, a lot of challenging right now in this market because I don't know where you guys are, obviously, but the new construction here is sold out a lot. Um, they don't even have anything for six to nine months. They're not even promising starting construction. So it is a little bit challenging right now, but you would do it on a weekend in the model home with permission from the builder. And then obviously the builder's rep. Um, you have little goodie bags with your stuff in it. Obviously, you need to rep the builder, too. So you're going to want to put their company name on things, cookies. And like I said, have you need to learn every floor plan in and out and just market yourself while you're there. You, you should get a lot of traffic. They, they really do. So let's back up now. Let's talk about I want to blow everybody's mind. You guys already if you're ready to have your mind blown, I want you guys to type in mind blow into the chat. And if I get enough people saying blow my you mind. You always blow our minds, Michael. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to see. I got to get, I got to get a lot of participation on this. If I don't get a whole bunch of people saying blow my mind or mind blown, yeah. if I don't get a whole bunch of that in here, then I'm just not going to tell you about it. Uh, but I got something that well, I got a few, I need a few more while you're, while you guys are deciding whether or not you're going to type that in there. We're going to, okay. All right. Okay. Now we're getting a few. All right. Well, here's the deal. Let me just, let me blow your mind for just a second here. When people go buy a new home, you know what a lot of them have? Money. They have money. What else do they have? Okay, Tom, say, I saw the lips. Say it, Tom. Unmute your microphone. Just unmute your microphone, Tom. Say it out loud. I want to hear it. A home to sell. They got a home to sell. Now, check this out. What do we know about most new construction? Like if it's if it's an agent that represents the builder on that subdivision. By the way, Clara, could you make me a, a co-host, please, or Sam? Um, and what would you do, or what what do we know about these agents that represent the builder? Oftentimes, what do we know about them? What does they the builder not allow them to do? They don't have a license. And they oftentimes they don't even have a real estate license. And even if they do have a real estate license, which many do not, because they only have one client, right? So they're not required to have a license in a lot of states, um, but because they're an employee of the builder. But even if they do have a license, many of them are not permitted to sell off site, right? Exactly. So they can't list those contingent properties. So a huge source of business is to run a contingency program where you'll guarantee that the house that they have to sell will sell mm -hmm. uh, in time for their new construction home to close. And let me tell you something, builders freaking love it. It's huge. So any thoughts on that? Questions on that? Anybody? Sarah, comments? No, that's, oh, that Tom, is you're muted. Idea. Hold on. 
I think Tom was getting ready to say something. Tom, were you trying to say you're muted? You got to unmute on your end again. Yeah, I just, I, I, you, I was getting a little background noise there. So yeah, I how can you guarantee that you would sell it in time? I'm, I'm just wondering. Ah, well, there you go. Let me ask you this. How do you think you could guarantee that you could sell someone's house in time? What's the one thing that you and the seller control that will guarantee it will sell every time? The price. That's it. Price cures all. Write that down. Everybody should write that down. Price cures all. I'm so sick and tired of people saying, oh, I got to do more marketing. I got to do this. I got to do that. No, you got to price it right. There's no, oh, I'm going to hit mute on your thing, Tom. I'm getting a little bit of background noise on your microphone there. Oh, and I got some background noise on somebody else's also. Uh, so anyway, that being said, price cures all. I'll buy anything at the right price. There's virtually no property out there. Well, there's maybe a couple, but very few properties on the planet that I wouldn't buy for a dollar. How about you, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a right price for every house, right? Tom, you got to unmute if you're going to say something. Yeah, if, yes. You could also give them a break on commission that would help them with reducing the price. Okay, so I, now here's what we're gonna do. We're, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about commission on this call. I will talk about it because I no longer sell real estate, so I can say this. But you guys cannot talk about commission between you. So I'm just gonna tell you right now. There's no way in heck I'm cutting my freaking commission. No freaking way. That's your income. You deserve that. You need to earn that. You know, obviously you guys do a lot to earn it and you deserve it when you earn it. And so I would not cut my commission. And I don't think it's necessary to cut your commission in order to get that business. What you need to do is you need to guarantee the builder that it's going to close. The, the, all the builder cares about is, is my deal going to freaking close on time? Are, am I gonna, <laughs> is there going to be any problem with this? Um, and so if you can guarantee that, they're good to go. All right. Anybody else? Sarah, were you going to add something to that? No, I think that's great. Um, just thinking yeah, you control the price. And then typically when someone's building a home, you've got extra time. You know, you've got that at least three months if they haven't broken ground, unless they're buying a spec to, to get it on the market, a little bit more time for marketing and really, yeah, I, I wouldn't be concerned about not being able to sell it. Even in a buyer's market, I mean, right now we're all, you know, listing agents are spoiled right now. Let's call it what it is, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. it's I really easy my as team, It's going to change and we're going to have a sad conversation with sellers soon. Which I'm looking forward to because it yeah. means, you know, investors like me can get better deals. But the, the fact of the matter is that even in a buyer's market, you can guarantee every listing will sell and every mm -hmm. listing will sell at the right price. Yes. All right. So Sarah, anything else to add before we move on? I don't have anything else to add. Get fired up. It's awesome. Does anybody else have, here. what's that? I love being on these with you. You're always good. positive, positive energy. I always feel so excited after talking with you. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions for Sarah before should we wrap up with her and move to Nick? Anyone else? If you have questions for her, either unmute your microphone. Yeah. Uh, just, Tom, go ahead. How yeah. she re registers people for the open house. Does she have an online method or does she have them sign when they enter the open house or how does she approach it? I, I luckily I'm, I'm using COVID and my um, arsenal for that right now. The, the sellers and the brokerage requiring that you guys sign in for COVID in case something happens, we need everyone to sign in. The sellers are requiring that. And if I don't have a paper sign-in sheet, which I used to do, I now have a sign-in through my website that automatically goes directly to my CRM. So I've gotten a little bit further on the technology side of that, but yes, they register. Sometimes you get bad emails, sometimes you get bad phone numbers, but typically it's all, it's all good. I put them in a drip campaign and mailers and then follow up, follow up. And I do, and, and a lot of people will say they're working with an agent. And I found that if they can't name that agent off the tip of their tongue pretty quickly, they're probably not, you know, so just make sure you're following up. Okay. So you bring up a, hang on one second, Tom, I'm, I'm going to have you ask your question in just a second. I want to touch on this though, so that we don't forget. And by the way, I'm sending everybody a video request. If you guys could please turn your video on, that would be awesome. Uh, but here's what I wanted to mention. You guys got to stop asking the wrong question and start mm -hmm. asking the right questions. The it's the wrong question to say, are you working with an agent? That's mm -hmm. never the right question. The, the question you need to ask is, who's your agent? Yeah, who's your and agent? If, they, right. if they struggle to come up with that name, game on, right? Yeah. 
if they struggle at all to come up with that name, you know, if they immediately say, oh, I'm working with Susie over here at Caldwell Banker. Awesome. Susie's a fantastic agent. I'm sure yeah. she's going to take great care of you. That's how you handle it. If they say, oh, um, um, we're working with, what was her name? Um, 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 Sue, Susie, yeah. Suba. I, then it's like, listen, hey, I totally get it. And, and, if, and if you decide to work with her, that's totally awesome. It sounds to me like you may not have a real strong established relationship, uh, probably don't have anything signed with her that says you're required to work with her. So if I found an off-market property that was exactly what you were looking for and it was a great deal, sounds like you'd be able to buy that for me if I brought it to you. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it is. Fantastic. Right. Now I've got them right. Game over. Like it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm handling it from there. All right. right. Or you could say, that's awesome. I, they are such a great agent. I'm, I know they probably have you r- enrolled in their buyer guarantee program. And what you just hit the nail on the head. Buyer, buyer guarantee. guarantee program. V- yeah. That's right. Buyer guarantee program, VIP program. Nobody's got that, right? You're, can, now you're talking apples to oranges. They've never heard of that before. Like what? She doesn't have that. Yeah. What's a buyer guarantee program? We will. If you're not happy within the first year of your house, of living in your house, Oh, you're breaking up a little bit, Sarah. Permission. Okay, so Sarah, you broke up a little bit there, but I'm guessing what you're about to say is if you don't if you don't absolutely love your home in the first 12 to 18 months you live there, then we'll sell it for you for free. Yes. Uh, exactly. It's a great one. Love that we call it the love it or leave it guarantee. Freaking love it. Tom, go ahead. What you ask your question? Does she use an iPad for signing into the uh, open house on on the in the actual house itself ipad or my laptop okay either or you know know what's really cool tom is they make these really cool things and i don't know if you've ever seen one of these so ipads really it's a fun toy my kids had an ipad once i've got this thing it's called a microsoft surface pro which Uh, is well and it's really cool because not only is it an actual computer with a one terabyte drive which i don't think the ipad has you can actually take the keyboard off of this thing and now it's it's just like an ipad only, oh, wait a minute, now it's a full-on laptop. I'm just saying, and I'm not paid by Microsoft to say this, and I know a lot of you guys are iToy users, and that's fine, it's fine. Those are great things, they're fun. Uh, I just, I'm an Android guy myself, so. But right. yes, you, you do that Oh my, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I love these Surface Pros. In fact, Tara just got another one yesterday. So uh, we've probably got 40 of them in the office now. Um, oh, Apple has two terabytes, Dave Woods. Dave, you and I are going to have one of these days, we're going to go Facebook Live and we're going to debate Android versus Apple. You and me, Woodson. It's game on, brother. All right. I know so, what I'm getting you for Christmas. You know, dude, don't know. No, Team that's Apple a, shirt. I'm getting you a Team Apple t shirt. That is a re gifting opportunity right there. Love it. Awesome. That is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and All as right. a side note, you always need to have a piece of paper, always print out an open house sign in sheet. You can get those from Breakthrough Broker, free online, whatever. Print that out with you because in the case of, I live in a rural area. Sometimes my internet doesn't work. Sometimes not something doesn't work. You always want to have a professional sign in sheet as a backup, just in case. I'm so glad you said that. And I would say whether it's, and this is for everything, whether it's listing agreements, buyer, you know, purchase and sale agreements. I always want to have paper backup for everything. I always want to be able to sign whatever I got to get people to sign on paper yep. everywhere I go, because dude, stuff runs out of battery. You drop it on the floor and it breaks. You, I mean, there's, there's a million things that can happen. You guys, you guys make way too much money in commission dollars to risk that on a piece of technology breaking or not functioning properly in the moment. Yes. Right. Have a paper backup. Now, if you're going to have a printed uh, dude, I'm telling you right and tug, stop it, brother. You're giving her, don't be giving her those ideas, man. He tugs in there. He's like, he's, I don't know if you can see the sit chats or he's like, Hey, get Michael's name printed on the Apple t-shirt. Yeah, no, no. I'll just find a Michael to give it to you. <laughs> All right. That being said, I'm just giving you a hard time, but that being said, um, you, you when you have your paper sign in sheets, Always, and you got to use a couple of different pens and you got to make sure it's different handwriting, but always have a few names already written in there, right? So use the open house sheet from a different open house. So nobody wants to be the first one to sign in, right? They want to see several names on there ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So, all right, good stuff. Uh, and listings to leads does have a sign in sheet that you can print out very easily. That's correct. Listings to leads got everything, dude. Those guys are dialed in. 
uh, Scott Pierce is great. And by the way, Scott will be, he comes, uh, the guy that owns listings to leads, uh, he comes and he teaches at our, our events, almost every event. So he'll most likely be at business strategy mastermind conference in November, really like super good information, super smart guy. One of the smartest guys in real estate, honestly. Um, all right. Any other thoughts, Sarah, before we move on to Nick and, or does anybody else have any other questions for Sarah? No, just keep moving forward. Just keep, keep doing it. When one thing doesn't work, just keep trying and keep moving forward and, and something will start to click. Don't give up. Don't quit. I know it gets frustrating, especially if you're early in, it, it will start to fall together, but don't give up right before you, right when you give up is when your breakthrough was coming. So, and if I'm happy to answer any questions after this or need any help, Club Wealth is an amazing, amazing company. They've turned my business into much more than I ever anticipated. So thank you, Michael. And thank you for having me today. We freaking love you, Coach Sarah. Seriously, thank you. And uh, if you guys could give her a little thank you, shout out in the chat. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Uh, you know, thank her for taking her time to be here. She doesn't get paid to be here. She's just doing it to, to help bring value to you guys. And we appreciate that. And Sarah, what market are you in in case somebody has referral opportunities or sees something on Facebook? I am in Maryland, Southern Maryland. So don't think like Baltimore, think Southeast of Washington, D.C. We're down. Oh, you Chester broke your, you're breaking up. Naval Air Station. We heard you say south of Washington. Southern Maryland. There you yep. go. Southern Southern Maryland. Southern Maryland. River, Sol Solomon's Island, Chesapeake Bay, that area. Perfect. Love it. Thank you very, very much. Well, we appreciate you being here. You are a rock star. And somebody was asking about Business Strategy Mastermind Conference and the cost. I don't know what the cost is today. It goes up the closer we get to the event. So if you're going to sign up for it, get signed up today. Also, airfare and hotel are cheaper now than they will be when we get closer to the event. Um, so just go to clubwealth.com forward slash BSM. And once again, Sarah, thank you very, very much for sharing all your great information with us today. Thank you. Uh, I hope to see everybody at BSM. Make sure you come and bring your teenagers. It's, it's life-changing for them. It, absolutely. Yes. And Sarah will be speaking there. So if you want to learn more from Sarah, uh, you can, you can get to know her, you can meet her. And let me tell you, what's really cool about these events the, the people at these events are ridiculous, right? I mean, we're talking, you, you got people that are, are, I would say the average person walking in the halls at these events is doing around 200 transactions a year. That's a good group of people to be hanging out with, right? That's the average. We got people there doing 500 to 4,000 transactions a year. 